Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 Episode 13. <laughs> so far everything has gone great, and I'm sure the rest will continue to go great. We got this. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. This is not the mission. It's been so quiet, I, I like didn't realize that this civilian carnage was still happening. Start with the first person you see. First person you see. Yeah, it does hurt. Hey, long time to see, it feels. Wow. Episode 7. 37. Red scale. Yeah, that's actually a perfect fit for him. That teamwork though. See, that's what I'm saying, that the students are just locking it down. Turns out the number one hero is all of us. No weak links. There's something so so awesome about him stepping in there to assist Yuji. You go ahead, I got this. And you know he does too. I think it's pretty much a wrap. There's no, no more threats. Really, except for all the upper rank demons and Mahito and Frankenstein Ghetto and Curse Toji. <laughs> Just some minor obstacles. Damn, didn't even have time for the, the thing to react. Breaking all the rules. I love the realism they're putting into Shibuya too. It must be so much more fun to watch this if you are familiar with the area. The guy who killed my brothers. He's a bloodbender. Damn. And also this establishes him as being unbelievably fast. Yeah, it's not just the, the projectile that's fast. Oh, he got hit bad. Who? <laughs> you gotta be more specific. They were unremarkable in every way. You know what they were really good at? I was really impressed by their ability to showcase Yuji and Nobara's teamwork. If I'm remembering correctly, for me, it was kind of a, a victory lap for the two of them on the season, for the kids. That's, that's a lot. It's a lot of... Yeah, yeah, don't let him. Don't let him charge up. Oh, damn. Yeah, the applications of this are, are great. And it just looks awesome. Looks amazing. Don't let him charge. Don't let him charge. Don't let him charge. This feels like it's a really bad pairing for Yuji. Yeah, yeah. This long distance thing and the speed. Yuji loses in a very, very long battle, drawn out battle. You gotta close that gap. Or do do that, whatever that is. You gotta float. Bold it into to jump first. Can I get in there? Get in there, get in there. Oh damn, he can move it like while shooting. Yeah, but he's also like uh, apparently a great one-on-one -on -one close close range fighter. Damn. Yeah, there's the close range. You have you have to do it now. Like, don't let him separate again. That looks permanent. I may owe this guy an apology. I didn't think a whole lot of him when they previewed the fight last episode, but that's legitimately a terrifying power and matchup for Yuji. What's the answer? What's the solution? I don't think it's head on. I think narrow the space. Small enclosed spaces. That's reassuring. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, yeah, this this cannot go on long. <laughs> Imagine watching your opponent just go to take a bathroom break. Yeah, 
There you go, play to his emotions. Let him rush into a, a enclosed space. Mekamaro GPT really saving Yuji from engaging on her front that just does not play to his strengths. To way overthink this, recently I've been reflecting on the fact that instead of trying to power through situations that are unnatural, it often makes a lot more sense to just shift your position to have more leverage. You can make yourself stronger, you can make yourself more powerful, you can grit your teeth and force yourself through things and sometimes that's necessary in the most effective way. But given the choice, I feel like it's often just better to understand how you work and then to align things best with that. Over the last couple of months, I guess, I've been kind of agonizing over like a general feeling of direction, directionlessness or like I wasn't doing enough, especially watching shows where people rise to these incredible heights like Haikyuu and March comes in like a lion and thinking, well, I should just, you know, pick a lane and, and grit my teeth and choose one thing and force my way into it instead of just like following whims and living a chaotic lifestyle. And then out of nowhere, unexpectedly, I got this amazing opportunity through a connection from a guy I met at a pool party and immediately felt aligned again. And it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's actually kind of the design. At other points in my life, I might have explicitly outlined that as the, the strategy. Something like maximizing exposure to the world and keeping my eyes open to it, following interesting leads and seizing whatever opportunities arise. That I think is just how I'm wired and it's the most natural for me. Additionally, there's something to be said about there being a, a weakness to every strength and a strength to every weakness. The opportunity I just mentioned puts me in, in a world of very influential, powerful, wealthy people. And man, they have so many advantages, but I'm also observing there are also many advantages to not having that, not having the, the weight on your shoulders, the stakes to every decision you make, the mobility, the, the anonymity, the not being put on a pedestal or, or having everyone you meet probably wanting something from you, etc., etc. Oh, he's just rushing right into this confined space. Although, yeah, the water probably has some effect on the blood, right? He wasn't wrong. No lies were told. Alright, this is your chance. This is your one chance. Make this count. Okay, that was less effective than I hoped. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you just steps up. Alright. Water blood, I got it. <laughs> you had me at water. Whoops. Looks like it comes down to a fist fight. You know, he also could just walk out of the bathroom. The less emotional person wins. Exactly. Still doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but... Turn on one of the toilets while you're at it. It's just gonna look awesome because of the, I don't know, the sprinkler water. What's the movie where this happens with the, the big bathroom water fight? It's got the Superman actor in it where he does the famous like arm reload. Yeah, I mean, he's still amazingly fast. This is lacking combat experience. Oh no. He's got a hidden bullet. He only needs one shot too. Oh. Through his sleeve. That was good. That was good. You, liver's not important, right? You don't need that, right? That's one of the organs you can dispense with. You got two of them. Maybe, maybe move, moved, his, moved his liver. Sometimes characters do that. Yeah, draw on the strength of your brothers, and especially Gojo. Imagine having this level of like insight with a hole in your liver, just doing your part. You're willing to give it all. That's the last one, right? It's the last secret bullet. Uh-huh, of course. It was spontaneous thrombosis, the real killer. <laughs> I'm like making fun of... I keep getting myself into trouble in this show by making fun of the exposition and then missing the exposition that turns out to be critically important. It's hard because there's genuinely really important things that are buried under things like grasshopper lore. This guy's really honoring the legacy of his brothers by making Yuji look really cool. Wait, just waiting. Wait for the thrombosis. Wait for the thrombosis to kick in. He was holding on to that for some reason. Oh, 
I love this water effect too. Usually it's rain, right? But this time it's, you know, bathroom water. Let it dissolve, let it dissolve. Water, water do your thing, there you go. Oh, hey, so terrifying. It's such a cool power, I feel like it's... I don't know, this is a great fight, but I don't think this guy's gonna stay around that much longer. And usually doing all this with a hole in his kidney. He was setting that up? Oh, this again, I love this. Sounded like metal. Oh, no. Bro, what happened to your... Where is your shoulder? Uh, this is not at all what I expected. Blood shield. That's not great. This is not really a victory lap. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Oh, wow. <laughs> to be honest, I kind of forgot about Zaguna. It's been so long. What the hell? What is it, the hematoma? Is this Sakuna's doing? Memories of basil pasta. What in the world does this mean? What? <laughs> Not exactly sure what to make of that ending or the pasta or any of it. Why was Yuji feeding him pasta? But it is cool to think about maybe Sukuna taking the reins a bit. Not really sure what keeps Yuji alive otherwise. Come to think of it, there's precedence for this, right? Yuji did die before, kind of. At any rate, I feel like this was one of the best episodes of this arc so far. It was very focused, right? It's just like Yuji and this dude in a bathroom, but it was exhilarating. Like I said, I wasn't super hyped when they previewed him at the end of the last episode, but he definitely earned his place just because rather than leaning on just kind of like a scale of who who's what number of power or whatever, you just can see and feel how dangerous he is, given the range and creativity of his powers, especially as like a matchup for Yuji and like sort of what's a losing rock, scissor, paper thing. I also, in, in a way, like the outcome because Yuji, I mean, in some situations, it feels like he just rises to whatever power level is required. We've seen him do some really amazing things, for example, in the, the tag team against Hanami, but then you think, well, he wasn't alone in that fight, right? He had a massive support. This is like him one-on-one -on -one facing a super high level enemy. He's not invincible, he can lose. Then you added the fact that the setting was really well conceived, really, really beautifully done, almost a, a subversion or, or like a very, I don't know, normal life image of the rain aesthetic. Just two powerful people battling it out in a subway bathroom. It's simple, but it works really well, especially when you, you consider the fact that it's this guy standing in the way of Yuji and Gojo, right? There's time pressure. One of my favorite parts of the episode, aside from the, the action itself, was Yuji's conceptualization of his responsibility in the fight. In that moment, despite having a, a large hole in what is probably a, a very important body organ, his thought is not survival. It's like completing the task and seeing himself as part of the team, part, part of the whole, coming to terms with his possible possible death if it means doing something useful. But still no tragedies, notably. Everything going great. Yuji is fine. Everything is fine. Whoops, there's an end credit scene. They're gonna find- oh, they found Yuji. These are Ghetto's girls, right? Get- get what started? What are you gonna do to- do to him? And Jujutsu Kaisen episode 13 uses its final moments to attack the English language, which is fair. 